um, and just being creative. Um, and I just want to show you, like, I just think books are such a great way to, like, they're such a great gift. And there's something like that. I just want to show you, like, that this is something I got when I was probably in kindergarten. And I still have it today. Um, and I, I bet, I, I just wonder if any of you maybe at the end could share any books like, or just could nod and say like, yes, I have books like that, that I was given when I was a kid. Like you can see the note my aunt wrote inside. It said, for Jessica and Savannah, that's my sister, a fun story to remind you to every now and then let your imagination run wild. You never know what's up ahead or up ahead as in like above your head. And that <laughs> might make more sense after we read the story. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to share it with you. So good night, Opus. Which book, dear Opus, may I read you tonight? Asked Grandma with love at the start of the night. Why, my favorite, I said, the one with the rhymes, the same one you've read me 209 times. And just as it is with all proper grannies, she ordered me into my pink bunny pajamas. Then she sat and said, hush, and her voice filled the room. Good night, she said softly. Good night to the moon. Hmm, that sounds like another book. Oh yeah, I gotta show you that picture first. It starts out in black and white, but it gets very colorful. That's the grandma. And good night to the lamp and the little toy boat. Good night to the mittens all hanging and soaked. Good night to the floor, good night to the walls, good night to the rug and the doors and the halls. Good night, tiny mouse, and good night, blue moonshine. Good night, Grandma read, the 210th time. I really can't say how this happened next. After 210 times, I departed the text. So this is him, this is Opus, the little penguin in bunny pajamas being read to by his granny. And when he says he departed the text, that kind of means he goes off in his own direction. Good night, I yelled jumping. Good night, far away. Good night to you all in my milky way. Sit back down, Grandma said. Get back into bed. There's no one up there, and that's not what I read. When your sight surpasses what's plainly in view, pull your head from the clouds. Get, your ground, get the ground to your shoes. Now let's finish the story with no milky way. It's improper that folks get so carried away. You can see he's kind of going off in his own imagination already. And she doesn't like it that he's reading his own and making it his own version. But she read no further. She said nothing more. Yes, Grandma had paused for a snooze and a snore. Now I take full blame for all that came next, for I continued the story, but departed the text. And she fell asleep. Good night, I yelled down to the chap beneath my bed. Good night to you, big-nosed, blue-footed biped. I'm so sorry I've missed you each night, but tonight I was told not to focus on things out of sight. Yes, good night, said the beast with toes taffy blue. I've been here for years and not noticed you. Look at what's under his bed. That's not in there. Let's finish your story and get carried away. We'll wish them good night in that far milky way. My friend winked to me as his voice dropped to whispers. Let's go there ourselves. Wish it right to their kissers. A team's what we need, that's just what I said. So we signed up my pillow and gave him a head. I, there was two of them and now they have three because they turned the pillow into another friend. And they're gonna go to the Milky Way. But what of dear grandma? There's no need to tell her. We hoisted and snuck her down to the fruit cellar. She'd hear nothing there as she snored in her slumber, comfy and snug under tons of cucumber. You can see Opus the penguin, the monster under the bed, and the balloon-headed pillow <laughs> taking her downstairs. 
<clears throat> our crew was complete, my Milky Way team. We boarded our Milky Way flying machine. Powered by dreams with some blue-footed help, we launched from the roof and let out a yelp. Good night to the city! Good night, all you people! Then we sideswiped a kitty and shortened a steeple. Looks a little dangerous. I just, again, I really love the artwork. It's very magical. <laughs> we flew past a fairy in need of some sleep. She'd spent the whole night just collecting old teeth. They rose to her girdle and covered her feet. There were heaps upon heaps, 2,000 feet deep. Good night, we yelled down and she waved us over. Then she wished to resell an old Elvis molar. Who's that? Is that the Tooth Fairy? And you see our friends in the distance and the Tooth Fairy is tired on top of all the mountains of teeth. We dropped in to check on the Washington scene where I talked with Abe Lincoln and told him our scheme. He said he himself had chased a few dreams, but now that he's marble, he'd wished for small things. And what, I asked then, would you most like to do? A swan dive, he said. So we stripped and did two. You see the Abraham Lincoln Memorial? I don't know if you've ever heard of that famous statue in Washington, D.C., but now he's going and doing a dive into the pool that's in front of where his statue is. It's pretty wild in their imaginations. <clears throat> we flew past the sailors of Blue Mist Lagoon, where for 10,000 years they, fin they fished for the moon. They'd seen it up there and they just want to hook it. They dreamed that one day they might baste and cook it. Good night, I called down. We'd help, but we're late. We're off to the stars. And they yelled, bring some bait. Just another kind of magical scene. On their way to the Milky Way. We flew through the clouds and that's where we met all those wonderful folks aboard that big jet. We yelled them good night till our faces turned purple, but theirs turned to white like they'd swallowed a gerbil. We haven't a clue as to what caused the scare. They slipped by quite nicely with inches to spare. Then we soared higher up till the whole sky was filled with lovable friends that the Milky Way spilled. Do the people look scared on that plane? Can you tell? They look kind of worried. I think they're getting closer to their destination. There, all above us, six billion udders. No cows dad around, just milky cow mutters. Good night, I cried out. Good night, one and all. Then they served us ice cream for a Milky Way ball. Twas time to go home, and they wept and said no. Then they kissed us good night, all six billion or so. So here's the freshest of up to now tips. If you're due a cow smooch, avoid those cow lips. This picture I think is the funniest. It's all the cows in the Milky Way. Oh, there's one I'm trying to give you a kiss. Um, is the Milky Way actually made out of like milk and cows? Or do you think that's just a joke? I think you all know. It's not. I found my way home and collapsed on the floor not long before Grandma showed up at the door. I told her all of what happened that night, that I stepped out for once and followed my sight, and that sometimes it's good that we look for a way to depart from our text and get carried away. It's like back to being black and white again, he's back home. For years I've thought back to how grandma had listened to all of the great things that I'd said she'd been missing. How that night she had paused at the foot of my bed 
and smiled at those Milky Way cows overhead. I sure like to think that one night or the next, you see grandma looking out the window and pondering, thinking, Opus asleep. I'd sure like to think that one night or the next, she'll get carried away and depart from the text. And that's grandma in her bunny pajamas with I think a Pegasus coming through the window. And she looks like she's enjoying herself and using her imagination. And that is the end of the story. You could see Opus in his bunny pajamas right there. What does it say? Bring your bunny jammies. <laughs>